Thanks very much. It's uh, a real privilege to be here today. And um, uh, first of all, I'd like to say to Cody, I hope I'm a whale in this context. And I can definitely confirm, I think I'm in the demographic that spends the most money. And uh, I can tell you that there's not nearly enough opportunity to spend money online for my demographic. So keep up the good work. <laughs> um, so I feel a bit, uh, a bit of an imposter here today because I think uh, a lot of you have, uh, are out there really um, building companies from startup to global. And uh, that's not what I've been doing over the uh, last 10 or 11 years. But um, I'm, I'm glad you've all stayed here to, uh, to find out a bit more about the other side of it, which is the investor perspective. And... Uh, the sorts of things not only that have been going on in New Zealand but also um, uh, internationally around uh, raising capital. And I hope that uh, what I can do today is just talk a little bit about uh, what I have seen in the last 10 years and some of the insights around uh, what works and what has worked, what does work and what hasn't worked for young entrepreneurs looking to raise capital, not only in New Zealand, um, but offshore. So um, many of these messages will be uh, not new to you. They'll be quite familiar. But uh, I guess what I'd like to emphasize in these messages is, is uh, just how important these particular factors are. So uh, my credentials, which uh, got mentioned there, we've um, over the last uh, 10 or 11 years as Chief Executive of Venture Investment Fund, uh, we have about 300 million of capital, which is uh, provided by the New Zealand government um, at our disposal to invest into technology startups. I mean, that's, that's the game that we've been in right from the start, and it's been wonderful to be involved in that. Uh, we've invested into 126 New Zealand companies over the last uh, 10 years or so, and most of those in the last five years or so. Uh, actually, we, uh, we did a recount of how much money has been raised for these companies over the last 10 years. And in fact, when you gather up all of the private capital, we've only invested somewhere around 120 million as NZVIF, but alongside has come um, a total, including ours, of 700 million for young companies in New Zealand. So I think it's not bad going. And, uh, Jonty um, referenced uh, some of the, made some comments about the development of the market here, and uh, and I can talk a little bit more about that. But certainly at the angel end of the market, I think we can be pretty proud of the activity and support that there is from particularly wealthy individuals in New Zealand supporting technology startups. Um, and across uh, those 126 companies over that time span, many of them are tiny, tiny, uh, but there are 1.2 billion of revenues that have been generated across those companies, a whole lot of tax paid to the government, and um, something around 850 uh, million of export revenues as well. So. Uh, give yourselves a big cheer for what a massive contribution you've made so far to the New Zealand economy. And um, just again on the, on the comment that uh, Jonty made around uh, this um, industry and sector, and I'm talking technology in the broadest sense, not just software. Uh, it is the second biggest area of um, exports that is generated by New Zealand across all technologies. And I think the uh, TIN 100 um, announcements uh, or the, the, the latest TIN 100 will be um, uh, announced around uh, late, later this month, I think. And it, it's just a phenomenal uh, situation, I think, that we find ourselves in, that technology is the second biggest export area for, for New Zealand. So, again, I think that's great. Um, uh, just one more thing, uh, just, to, just to make sure that... Uh, um, uh, that I can uh, genuinely, if you like, sing for my supper while I'm here. You'll be pleased to know uh, that um, even as uh, recently as yesterday, I signed off um, another four investments alongside our um, angel investment partners, including Motum, which was one of the ones up on the screen there. So um, I'm sure you already know if you're in the room that you got your money, but... Uh, 
Um, <laughs> well done. Uh, we, um, the model uh, that we invest in is, and you are all welcome at any time, and I make a deliberate um, policy of this, although it can be a bit overwhelming, uh, at any time to come and talk to me directly about raising money for your company. Um, the model that we operate, though, is one where we look for private investors, private individuals with capital who have an appetite and experience around investing in, in young technology companies. And the way that we operate is we get to know them, we get to know how they operate, and uh, if we get comfort around their um, investment ethos and their willingness to engage around technology startups, then we partner with them with capital and we'll invest alongside them into young companies. So we've developed um, partnerships with about 14 angel investment groups, and including Powerhouse in Canterbury, which is uh, a very active partner for us, and we think they're doing a great job down here, uh, very professional in how they engage, and certainly over the last couple of years in particular have really cranked up um, their investment activity. So we've got 14 angel partnerships across the country, and we are looking for more um, groups of investors who want to put their own money into technology companies to partner with. So again, if you're an investor in the audience and want to uh, find a way to crank through more money into young companies, then please come and see us. On the venture capital front, we've invested the most recent uh, Partnerships that we've established are with Valar Ventures, and Valar Ventures is a um, US-based um, venture capital fund. Um, Peter Thiel, who was one of the founders of PayPal, uh, has set up this fund uh, specifically to invest into New Zealand technology companies. And uh, they, it, it's a bit of a fly-in, fly-out fund, but um, certainly one that is uh, scanning the horizons in New Zealand for investment opportunities as well. And we've partnered directly with Peter and his team um, around investing into New Zealand companies. Uh, Movac Ventures uh, also is the other uh, local venture capital fund that has funds available right now. Uh, we've got a couple of other venture capital funds in the New Zealand market that are currently raising capital, Pan Pacific uh, and Pioneer. So um, it, it's a tough market in New Zealand for raising capital, as I'm sure you know, beyond the, the first million or two million. And it's one of, the, uh, one of my particular um, um, hobby horses is how do we improve the... Uh, the capital markets in New Zealand to encourage more investment into technology, not just at the startup end of the market, but as these companies um, grow and to the extent that you need to raise capital that you can get more of it in the local market. Um, we just did a piece of research actually last year uh, around we, we went and interviewed, we did our market validation or our market research and we um, talked to 48 institutions in New Zealand about their, uh, both their appetite and attitude to investing in venture capital in, in the general sense, but also into um, early growth companies. And I can tell you it's not a pretty picture. Um, and, and some of that's around the tr track record of the venture capital industry itself and in investing. But I really do think there is um, a big, uh, what I would call, uh, profile and education piece that we have to tell to institutional investors. And I do believe they need to engage in building and supporting investment into um, high growth technology in New Zealand. So it's one of my personal um, um, challenges, but I would encourage you as well, whenever you have the opportunity, uh, not, not just to casually say, look, it's been great for me, I've been able to raise uh, capital for my company, but to really say we've got to have a much deeper capital markets infrastructure that supports uh, the huge amount of um, opportunity and entrepreneurial activity that we see in New Zealand. Um, that's just a slide giving you a sense of um, the range of companies. About 25% of the com or about tw no, sorry, about 20% of the companies that we invest, they're all New Zealand companies. About 20% are, are out of the Canterbury region, 
Um, I don't know why I've got some double ups on that slide. I guess it's uh, just a technology glitch. Um, and ICT um, is well represented around those um, companies. Uh, as I said, um, in a sector sense, um, software, biotech's actually at the top of the list. That's partly because it's so expensive doing um, biotech that it uh, tends not to be so many companies but uh, um, big chunks of capital. But certainly um, software is um, about 26%, I think, on that slide. I can't see without my glasses, um, of, um, of the investment activity. And certainly um, by number of companies, it's by far the biggest part of our investment portfolio. So um, what have we learned? And um, I'm, I'm at a great advantage in that, um, you know, when you're up in a helicopter looking down, everything looks a lot the same. Uh, and, uh, and you do see the standouts and you do see what looks different um, on the one hand, um, but you also learn uh, very quickly uh, a lot of the stories are not that convincing, a lot of the stories look the same, a lot of the stories are going to be stories of failure. And, um, you know, the learning for all of us is that 90% of startups fail. And, we, and what you get to see in, the, in this room today and from Jonty and Cody and the others is, is the success or the, um, the potential success and opportunity. Uh, and, and that's great. And actually, my, you know, the, the biggest learning, I guess, that I would say to any of you that, that are aspiring to be uh, successful on the global stage is uh, talk to those who have been successful in doing this. That, uh, Jonty's story, um, you know, I mean, the people like that are the best people to learn from and uh, to find out from. Not from me, I can tell you. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to be able, but I can tell you the things that we see that people consistently do well and the things that, and the mistakes that people consistently make. So your job really is to learn as much as you can about what avoids failure. And, um, and try and move yourself out of the 90% and into the 10% and sometimes 20%. Um, the, other, I mean, the other thing is that when you're in the helicopter, you do, uh, we do have the opportunity to go down, swoop down and, and look at detail in companies. We, we're shareholders directly into about 70 of those companies. We see the term sheets. We see the shareholders' agreements. I, I sign the shareholders' agreement so we know what you're doing in your companies, we know what your aspirations are. And um, uh, it, it, it's, it did encourage me also, uh, Jonty talked about they standardise um, their shareholder agreements, investment. Um, we've moved a long way in New Zealand over the last few years, and I'm sure um, for any of you who are not familiar, there are very standard form investment um, term sheets and shareholder agreements available in the market. Um, of all, of of the various levels of sophistication, from uh, convertible notes right through to full standard um, shareholder agreements, so you don't need to spend a lot of money on lawyers at the early end of the market either. There's lots of free information, and uh, lots of people who can provide you with um, standard documents that that you can adapt. Um, so one of the areas that um, I wanted to talk a little bit about is market validation. And um, this is the area that we see that people in New Zealand most consistently um, treat very casually. And, um, and I certainly don't see that in, in the presentations we've had today. I've been listening carefully and each of the individuals that has talked about the market that they're in and the op opportunity that they are uh, pursuing are very, very clear on what their market is and what the opportunity is. But we see many, many companies that don't validate the, the, um, the, the sore point, if you like, or the hurt, hurt point. They assume that because they've got a whiz-bang technology that the market will want it. And um, without that market validation piece, um, you can find yourself um, in Rob Adams' 
uh, words um, going, ready, fire, 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 aim. And I think, um, uh, you know, th that's fine. Um, fail, fail fast is good. Um, and, you can, and you can do that if it's not too an expensive uh, an exercise, but we've just heard about some of the challenges of going into the US market. It can be expensive. So getting that piece around really understanding the market and um, the market that you're serving and, um, and responding to that is, is absolutely critical. The, um, for those of you who haven't heard Rob Adams speak, he was in Canterbury earlier this year. Uh, we sponsored him to come out here. He will be back again next year. I don't think he'll be talking about market validation, but um, I'm not, I don't get a commission from his book, but if you don't do anything else in the market validation area, please read this book called If You Build It, Will They Come? It's a really great, it's, it, it's an easy read and it's a great way to get a sense of uh, what you need to think about in market validation. Um, the reason I have Orion up there is not only is it a hugely successful company, but um, boy does um, Ian McRae understand his market and the hurt point in that market. Uh, domain expertise. Uh, and um, I was really tackling this particular one uh, from a non-software um, perspective. Um, Brian Ward's a vet. He's speci he specialises in um, research around uh, stomach um, uh, sheep stomach linings and um, and the um, wound healing properties of. Um, or use of sheep stomach linings in, in healing wounds, internal wounds. He is a deep expert in that area, and I am sure that his company, Mesynthes, uh, will be uh, very successful because he must be one of the most expert uh, with a superb product uh, that is much in need in, in that particular market. Um, he also has surrounded himself with international expertise that understands the, um, the ecosystem which he's trying to sell this product into, a very challenging um, ecosystem. I loved the slide that Jonty had on Loomiscape and, um, and also um, Cody's description around Carnival Labs and really understanding uh, the, the, the domain that you're in. Um, listening to Cody and not only can he tell the great story around the technology and how excited he is and how, he's, how they were there at the forefront of a whole bunch of things. But actually, um, you look at uh, the data he that presented. He really understands uh, what's going... Well, I hope you do, Cody. <laughs> um, he really understands the data in that market as well. And um, really understanding the technology ecosystem that you're moving into. And we see some pretty clever technology companies in New Zealand. And we know that New Zealand's very good in this area, but sometimes those companies uh, take themselves into the US almost blind, and they really don't understand the ecosystem and how it works. And, and that is one of the areas that I think that by talking to your peer groups and and the people around you who've been successful around, uh, as, as um, was shown on Jonty's Loomiscape, really understanding that ecosystem and how you get into it and who you need to engage with and developing those relationships. And that's part of the domain expertise in, in your area. Uh, technology forefront, uh, it doesn't have to be that you've got something absolutely unique. Um, it can be, uh, 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 you know, at the forefront and one of many, but you've, um, you've got to be there really fast if that's the case as well. As, as was indicated um, uh, by Vend, you've got to really uh, move very fast if you want to be um, in, in an area that, that, that you see an opportunity and you've got to go for it. Um, but, but again, um, uh, at the other end of things, um, it, even for me, uh, it is a big yawn when you see companies in New Zealand that think that they have 
just invented sliced bread when there are at least, even I can go online and see that there are 20 others that are in this space already and well ahead. So I know it sounds really obvious, but really looking for what is the particular unique gap and what is the what is, what is it that you are at the forefront of that you are going to be able to conquer is pretty critical. And again, I think Rob Adams said that um, for every New Zealand company that's kind of dreaming up the new idea, there's already seven underway in the US. Uh, finding the right international partners. And um, again, I've used a, a non-software example. Uh, BioVitoria is a company that um, combines New Zealand science capability with Chinese, um, with a Chinese uh, fruit that's grown in one particular part of China that has a natural zero calorie sweetener in the skin that's been used for hundreds or th possibly thousands of years as, as a natural sweetener. Um, and this is a product that, that um, I think uh, Tate and Lyle, big, big food uh, company um, will announce their tabletop sweetener, you know, sort of a to replace all of those, um, you know, kind of nasty um, saccharin kind of things. Um, and uh, but it, it's taken a long time for uh, Biovitoria to find the right partner to really uh, get this product into market and uh, working out who you're going to partner with, um, whether that's your strategic partners or whether it's getting the right. Um, um, capability into your own company to grow it is, is absolutely a critical part of this. And it is um, in the international domain. You have to find the right people who are going to uh, get that leg up into the international market if you're going to be successful. Not only putting your, your own people uh, in situ, but also who, who are your strategic relationships and partners going to be with. And uh, last, last but not least, um, smart capital. Um, and um, one of the investments uh, that we're in is a company called BookTrack, and um, it got some money from uh, PayPal, uh, from Vela Ventures, and Peter Thiel, and um, uh, as you know, he was one of the uh, investors, uh, very early investors in Facebook as well. And I can tell you that I have never, ever seen uh, such direct access for a company as a result of getting a very small amount of investment from somebody who was an investor in Facebook. And um, not only the capital, the capital is actually semi-irrelevant at one level. It is uh, the access that you get from the capital and, uh, and the support that you get if somebody has decided that they want to back you into the US market. So. Looking, um, there's some great smart capital in New Zealand. There's also uh, capital in New Zealand that um, there's plenty of rich people in New Zealand who are happy to drop money into something when it's uh, getting successful. Uh, you need, as as an entrepreneur and as a company builder, to work out. Um, okay, you need some capital, but what else do you want to come with that capital? How do you want to? Uh, how do you want that capital to help you launch and, and get into the next stage of, of building your business? And if the, if the capital providers can't own, answer that for you, then I'd suggest uh, leave the capital alone unless, it's, um, you know, unless you're about to go under. Um, and that's, I just wanted to, um, that's really all I wanted to say today, um, but I'm very happy, obviously, to take questions about uh, investment and um, access to capital and any of those sorts of things in the New Zealand market. Thank you very much. So do we have any questions for Francesca? Not at this, oh yes we have one. Hello Francesca. Um, <laughs> What the, 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 you mentioned about Valar Ventures and U.S. and wealthy individuals. What about Asia? Are we progressing about Asian capital coming to New Zealand? It's any potential on that? Thank you. Um, you couldn't have asked me a better question. Actually, I'm just, um, 
Uh, we haven't engaged with China, although I am trying to work quite hard to work out how we get that engagement because I know that there is a lot of capital and a lot of interest in technology, New Zealand technology, into China. Um, uh, I'm shortly to head off, in fact, in a week's time to Taiwan, and um, we're just about to sign a partnership with Taiwan um, to announce um, a fund uh, and some capital that uh, is intended specifically to engage Taiwanese capital, and uh, it's uh, with the National Development Fund of Taiwan, which is a US $10 billion fund, and they're interested in New Zealand technology, and of course they are, um, uh, they have a very well-developed uh, um, uh, technology industry uh, off the back of the semiconductor and then biotech and, and everything. So, yes, I think that there are great opportunities to engage. Um, it's the same as the US. You have to be in market. You have to be engaging and building relationships. But um, certainly I'm aware that New Zealand companies who have done the hard yards into places like Taiwan, Japan, have, have had a lot of success, and there is a lot of money uh, there for the right opportunities. Do you have any more questions for Francesca? Over here, Francesca. One last question. Sorry. Uh, earlier we saw a uh, sequence from which you should, before you go and see a venture capitalist, um, from your experience, uh, how complete should the proof of concept product be um, as far as the ability to get success in getting the funding? Because um, there's, there's that debate between being too slow to market versus trying to make it too... Um, complete and finished? Um, it does depend a little bit on the particular sector you're in. Uh, the, um, in terms of um, software, I thought Jonty's slide and, and comments were very apt. Uh, I think that um, uh, bootstrapping for as long as you can is a, is a really good idea. Um, in, in the New Zealand system, uh, there is, though, um, you, you can get quite small chunks of money uh, to help you in that, even in that um, proof of concept stage. So if you think you need a little bit of money, and I know this because we invest as little sometimes as 25000 or 50000 alongside some of our angel partners who who like the idea but want to make sure that the proof of concept has been um, properly uh, looked at. So um, uh, yeah, I think there is money at times for, for, for some companies. Yeah.